One day, like Carbonate woke up. He was very tired and grumpy because his friend Sodium had just moved to Paraguay. But Bicarbonate heard that his girlfriend Biotin was going to be having a party later. So he began the 12 mile walk to Biotin's house. Biotin liked to make up nicknames for almost everything, so she decided to name her house Pyruvate Carboxylase. Bicarbonate was feeling a little more awakened upon arriving, but he was still concerned that his grumpiness would cause him to get slapped by one of the other guests. Biotin had invited a very cool group of friends with expensive sunglasses that were collectively referred to as Acetyl Coenzyme A, and Bicarbonate wanted to make sure that he didn't accidentally say anything rude. So he went into Biotin's kitchen, which he liked to call Catalytic Site 1, and drank several cups of coffee. All of a sudden, Bicarbonate had an urge to legally change his name. So he filled out the appropriate paperwork for a name change in the state of California, stating that he would like to be called Carboxyphosphate. He chose this name because after drinking the coffee, he noticed that he had a phosphate group stuck to his carbon atom. After completing this paperwork, Carboxyphosphate was feeling very energetic, so he ran up the stairs to talk to Biotin. Unfortunately though, Carboxyphosphate ran too fast with a stomach full of coffee. He threw up onto a bed, losing a significant amount of weight all at once. He decided that the name Carboxyphosphate was no longer acceptable. So he changed his name again to carbon dioxide. He chose this because he, when he threw up, he had lost his phosphate group as well as a hydrogen atom. After completing some more paperwork, he looked for biotin. But unfortunately, she wasn't there. Carbon dioxide wandered back down the stairs and discovered that biotin had been sitting just outside of catalytic site 1 all along. But for some reason, he hadn't noticed her there. Biotin stood up and gave carbon dioxide a big hug during which they walked over to another room called Catalytic Site 2. They sat down and discussed recent events in the citric acid cycle. Oh no! said Biotin. I think I lost a proton when we were walking over here. But she was so happy to visit with carbon dioxide that she decided to look for it later. Carbon dioxide was about to tell an excellent joke when they both heard somebody sneeze. Achoo! They looked around the room but didn't see anybody else. Was that your phone? No, said carbon dioxide. Mine sounds like somebody's coughing. <coughs> Biotin stood up, walked over to the closet, and opened it. She discovered that a lady named Pyruvate had been hiding in the closet, spying in them for at least several minutes. Biotin got very annoyed. Hey, she said. I just cleaned the carpet in that closet, and now you're standing in it with muddy shoes. Just because I named my house after you doesn't mean that you can go wherever you want and make a mess. Biotin reached over and tore off one of Pyruvate's protons, causing general acid-base catalysis. Then they argued for a while. But carbon dioxide was not bothered at all. He thought that Pyruvate looked very nice. She seemed like somebody who would enjoy legally changing her name, which was one of carbon dioxide's favorite activities. Pyruvate and carbon dioxide talked for several minutes and decided that they would like to get married immediately. The relationship between carbon dioxide and biotin was also ended immediately, although they still remained good friends. In fact, biotin allowed them to get married right there in catalytic site too. Immediately after they were married, they each filled out more paperwork to legally change each of their names to oxaloacetate. Then they moved together to the citric acid cycle.